Well, hello there. My name is sometimes Heather and I play with Gosala. Last time, I took RCP around Crypt of Hearts 1 just to show you how her new build handles and today, I'd like to share more info on her current setup. Elizabeth is my go-to character when I want to test something out. She's learned everything about antiquities, tried out the Oaken Soul, and become a Sitchik. About a month ago, right before falling asleep, I thought, I wonder if there are any Sitchik vampires. And here we are. I have a Sitchik vampire. I looked around to see if anyone's been down this road before. It seems I have found a relatively uncharted territory which is highly unusual in ESO. Erzipi is a high elf. In Oblivion, the Altmer are mockingly referred to as Golden Rods. Therefore, I tried to make Erzabeth as golden as possible. She wears shades of gold and copper, even dons extravagant eye makeup. I worried how vampirism would affect her appearance, but I kinda like the undead hue on her. I have armed RCB with two staffs. Let's start with her backup weapon, which is a resto staff. First, we have Critical Search. This grants major brutality and sorcery for 30 seconds at a time. While active, Critical Search heals Elizabeth whenever she does critical damage. I really like the ability and often use it for my vampire socks. Next, we have Boundless Storm. This sends Elizabe into lightning form, allowing her to zap enemies around every two seconds for a set amount of shock damage. The effect lasts for 30 seconds at a time. Boundless Storm also grants major resolve, which increases physical and spell resistance. This is a dramatic ability which is quite useful for any sock. Next comes our healing ability, Symbiosis from the Citric skill line. This is a toggleable ability. While toggled on, it turns your light and heavy attacks to healing abilities that can be used on allies. While light attacks only heal allies, heavy attacks also restore some magicka to LCB. As Elizabeth heals friends, she also heals herself for 51% of the amount. During our adventure in Crypt of Hearts, I noted two things. First, friends who are at full health cannot be healed, which makes sense of course. And two, light and heavy attacks turn to healing abilities on both weapons. While this is a fun and unique ability, it is a touch inconvenient. I like the immersion it brings, but if you'd like to play a real healer, Radiating Regen would be a better choice. Moving on, we have Degeneration. This deals a set amount of magic damage over 20 seconds, while granting major brutality and sorcery. As Critical Surge does that too, this might seem a bit useless. The amount of damage this does is pretty high, and major skill passives make degeneration totally worth the cost. With all passives purchased, casting a major skill ability grants you empower for 10 seconds. This increases the damage heavy attacks do on monsters by a whopping 80%. Last, we have channeled acceleration. This increases critical damage by 10%. It also grants major expedition, which makes you run faster. Erasipi's build still relies heavily on critical damage, so this is a must. Our main weapon is a lightning staff. First up, we have Blood Mist. This delightful vampire ability allows you to leap at enemies and to deal a set amount of magic damage to the enemies in the area of effect while healing you for a portion of damage done. While Blood Mist might not be the most deadly ability out there, Vampire passives grant a fun boost through it. While you're beyond Vampire Stage 2, Strike from the Shadows increases your weapon and spell damage for 6 seconds when you leave Sneak, Invisibility or Mistfall. I've given RCP Simmering Frenzy though I don't always use it. This is a toggleable ability which costs health to cost. While it's active, it drains health every two seconds while increasing weapon and spell damage. When toggled off, 
a portion of drained health is restored. In theory, this is a fun skill, but in practice, it could be better. It works okay for RCB since her health stays up pretty well, but if you don't have a consistent way of keeping health up, I would recommend replacing this with something easier. Streak, perhaps, or eviscerate if you'd like to stick with vampire abilities. Then we have Endless Fury. This deals a set amount of shock damage. If the enemy hit falls to or below 20% health within 20 seconds of impact, there will be an explosion that deals a significant amount of shock damage to all enemies around. If an enemy is killed within 5 seconds of being hit, some magicka is restored. I really like this one and use it as a spammable. Next, Storm Pulsar. This deals shock damage to all enemies around while granting them minor mangle, which reduces their maximum health for 10 seconds. Storm Pulsar is an easy way to blast through trash mobs and I use it a lot in delves and public dungeons. Last up, we have Mystic Orb. This summons an orb that travels through enemies for 10 seconds at a time. While active, it deals a set amount of magic damage every second. The orb also comes with a synergy. Activating the combustion synergy makes the orb explode. This deals quite a bit of damage to enemies and restores magic stamina to allies. This is a fun ability but requires someone to actually use it. If you'd like to play as an actual healer, choosing Energy Orb Morph would be a better choice. That one heals allies instead of pulsating out magic damage. Our ultimate is naturally the Swarming Scion. This turns LCB into a monster and summons bats to swarm around for 20 seconds at a time. Let's enjoy. I would recommend getting all the passives from Storm Calling, Destruction Staff, Light Armor, Vampire, Major Skill, Psychic Order, Undaunted, and High Elf Skill Lines. That's a hecton of skill points, but passives do help you deal more damage and to restore Magicka. Elizabeth's build isn't an easy one to create, but it is a lot of fun to play with. Let's take a look at champion points real quick. I'm not very good with this, so please don't trust me blindly. In Warfare, my active stars are Fighting Finesse, Weapons Expert, Biting Aura, and Thaumaturge. In Fitness, I've gone with Sapling Spells, Rejuvenation, Fortified, and Boundless Vitality. In Craft, I have Master Gatherer, Treasure Hunter, Homemaker, and Plentiful Harvest. Do choose the Craft stars that make playing fun for you. I've gone with three armor sets and stuck with the same ones I used with Elspeth's normal build. First, I have Order's Wrath. This is a craftable set from High Isle. It adds to critical chance and weapon and spell damage. With five pieces equipped, critical damage and critical healing are further increased. For my second set, I chose Mother Sorrow. This is an Overland set that drops from Deshaan. Mother Sorrow adds to maximum magicka and critical chance. Together, these sets allow RCP to do constant and reliable critical damage, which, thanks to critical search, keeps her health up. I have Erisbeth walking under the Thief boon. This increases critical strike rating. For our monster set, I've held on to Elambris. The Elambrus Helm drops when you slay the last enemy in Crypt of Hearts 1 in Vetron. Shoulders can be purchased from Undaunted Vendors. The Elambrus set adds to maximum magicka. With both pieces equipped, you have a chance to summon a meteor shower to rain destruction on enemies whenever you deal flame or shock damage. In order to make the most of this set, RCP's Lightning Staff has a flame damage enchantment. Elizabeth was my second or third character. Since her beginning, 
She's been the one I pick when I want everything to be nice and easy. I thought that would change when I took her to the altar, but she's still nice and easy to play with. I don't know exactly why that is. Perhaps something in her golden weirdness just appeals to me. I do hope you'll like her as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Done.